All right, this video is gonna be very explosive and not in that type of way. Get your mind out of the gutter, please. Okay, so this is seven best ETF trading strategies for beginners. So if you're a beginner, uh, EFTs are known to be one of the easiest way for a beginning investor to make a lot of kick. Okay, so we're gonna go over the seven strategies to make money with ETs if you're a beginning investor. And by the end of this video, you're gonna know exactly how to get started. Is it safe for you as a beginning investor? Even if you're an experienced investor, is it still safe for you? Is it a, a good addition to your portfolios of investment? Maybe you do cryptocurrency, maybe you do, maybe you do stock trading and do all of that extra stuff or day trading and all that retardation. No, I'm just playing. Okay, so we're gonna get to number one. I'm not gonna ramble, okay? Do a Jet Li sidekick to the like button and boost this out into the sphere. Please give a high five to the clouds and whoever's up there. Dollar cost averaging. We begin with the most basic strategy, basic strategy, dollar cost averaging. Dollar cost averaging is the technique of buying a set fixed dollar amount of an asset on a regular schedule, regardless of the changing cost of the asset. All right, so as you can see, it got a couple keywords in there that you need to pay attention to, guys. It's regular schedule, and buying a set fixed dollar amount. So it's very, very, very consistent. Don't do this if you're not a consistent person. All right, and this is not investment advice, this is just educational purposes. All right. Anyway, beginning investors are typically young people who have been in the workforce for a year or two and have a stable income from which they are able to receive, uh, save a little each month. So let's say you work at Family Dollar or Walmart or some treacherous plantation like that, and you're trying to get out of that soon. You want to get out of that. There's a million things you can invest in to do, links in the description, but this is also an option right here. It says such investors should take a few hundred dollars each month and instead of placing it into a low interest saving account that won't give you a god dang on thing, invest it in an EFT or groups of EFTs. Remember, this is good for beginners, okay? So these are the advantages of that, all right? The advantages are there are two major advantages of periodic investing for beginners. And what it means by periodic investing is just a, a similitude of regular schedule. That's what they're trying to tell you, okay? All right, so the first is that it imparts discipline to the saving process. All right, because we get our checks and we just go ham or I don't eat perk. So we go, what, I don't know, lamb. All right, <laughs> as many financial, uh, uh, financial planners recommend, it makes imminent sense to pay yourself first, which is what you want to do. I strongly suggest that. So let's move down. It says the second advantage is that by investing the same fixed dollar amount in NFTs every month, the basic premise of dollar cost averaging, you will accumulate more units of the ETF price is lower, uh, more when the EFT price is lower and fewer units when the EFT price is high. Thus averaging out the cost of your holdings over time, this approach can pay off handsomely, handsomely, like how I'm looking right now. No, I'm just playing, I just woke up. All right, as long as one sticks to the discipline, that is the key word, man. Like a lot of you guys don't have discipline. Right now you're sitting there looking over at the suggested videos that come up next. You can't even focus on a video that you clicked on. Slow down like Bobby Valentino and focus on this so that you can invest and get some money and quit that job. Okay, for example, all right, say you invested 500 on the first of each month from September. That sounds like a lot to, to some people, you know, but I understand, all right? an EFT that tracks the S&P 500 index. Thus, when the SPY units were traded at 136 bucks in September, 2012, 500 would have fetched you 3.67 units, but guess what? But three years later, when the units were trading close to 200, a monthly investment of 500 would have given you 2.53 units. All right, so let's move on. Over the three year period, you would have purchased a total of 103.79 SPY units based on closing prices adjusted for dividends and splits at the closing price of 209. All right, so August 14th, these units would have been worth 21,000 
735 bucks for an average return of 13%. So number two, man, number two. So dollar cost averaging is awesome, but you have to be consistent and you have to be disciplined, baby. You need to go and learn from a monk. Maybe you should do that, but don't get into Buddhism, all right? You need to go and learn from, you know what I'm saying? Like go go balance on, your, on one foot for three hours, learn some discipline, all right? So asset alloca uh, allocation, asset allocation, which means uh, allocating a portion of your portfolio to different asset categories, such as stocks, bonds, commodities, and cash for the purposes of diversification is a powerful investment tool. The low investment threshold for most EFTs makes it easy for beginners to implement a basic asset allocation strategy, depending on their investment time horizon. Remember, it depends. All right, and your risk tolerance, because like a lot of y'all are afraid to lose a little bit of money, man. I lost money, and guess what? The next day, I was still alive. So get over it, man. Do a Jet Li sidekick to the like button if you're strong. All right, as an example, young investors might be 100% invested in equity ETFs when they are in their 20s because of their long-term investment uh, uh, horizons and high risk tolerance. So that means, look, <clears throat> in your 20s, you know, like, all right, I, well, you think, well, I'm going to be living to I'm like 80 or something, hopefully longer than that. So I can invest hellas up in this, you know what I'm saying? Because I got time. But as they get older, like into their 30s and embark on major life changes, such as starting a family, buying a house, they may shift to less aggressive investment mix, mix such as 60% in equities, EFTs, and 40% and buying the FTs. So that makes a lot of sense. When you're in your 20s, unless you are, uh, Brenda's got a baby or something, you know what I'm saying? Uh, unless you just running around, uh, Papa was a rolling stone in your 20s or something, then you can invest a little bit more aggressively. I wish I knew all that back in the day. All right, so swing trading. This is another one. This is number three. Swing trades are that uh, swing trades that seek to take advantage of sizable swings in the stock or in other instruments like cryptocurrencies. Why am I saying cryptocurrencies? Currencies are commodities. They can take anywhere from a few days to a few weeks to work out, unlike day trades, which are seldom left open overnight, okay? Uh, yeah, I heard that. That was a little quick jab at you day traders, man. What you wanna do? You wanna put the gloves on? You want me to handle your light work, man? Let me go ahead and get at these. Who is this? This is Investatopia, Invest Investopedia. We're going to get them, all right? I'll run up, all right? So the attributes of EFTs that make them suitable for swing trading are the diversification and tight bid ask spreads. In addition, because EFTs are available for many different investment classing, classes and a wide range of sectors, a beginner can choose to trade an EFT uh, ETF that is based on a sector or asset class where they have some specific expertise or knowledge. So check this out. Here's an example, baby. For example, someone with technolo technological background may have an advantage in trading a technology. ETF, like the Invesco QQQ ETF, which tracks the NASDAQ 100 index. A novice trader who closely tracks the commodity markets may prefer to trade one of the many commodity EFTs available, such as Invesco, DB Commodity Index Tracking Fund. Man, that stuff is like a freaking tongue twister almost. All right, because ETFs are typically baskets of stocks or other assets, they may not exhibit the same degree of upward price movement as a single stock in a bull market. All right, that means it's going all the way up by the same token. Their diversification also makes them less accessible, I love that word, than single stocks to big downward move. <sighs> This provides some protection against capital erosion, which is an important consideration for beginners. Yes, you heard that. So if you're a beginner, check out capital erosion, man. Google it. All right, number four, sector rotation on the best ETF trading strategies for beginners, baby. All right, ETFs also make it relatively easy for beginners to execute sector rotation based on various stages of the economic cycle. For example, assume an investor has be, been investing in the biotechnology sector through iShares NASDAQ Biology, biotechnology ETF. 
an investor may wish to take profit as ETF and rotate into a more defensive sector such as consumer staples via the consumer staples sector. All right. So number five, check this out. Look, we're getting there. I'm getting off right now. And I ain't talking about dude Mahershala Ali from the freaking uh, Luke Cage. All right. <laughs> Short selling. Short selling. The sale of a borrowed security and financial instrument is usually a pretty risky endeavor for most investors and not something most beginners should attempt. All right, so look, we don't want to put limited beliefs on you, you know. You can do all things through Christ that strengthens you, including this. But they're just warning you, and sometimes you should heed the warning, especially if you're a beginner, lower your pride and maybe start with some dollar cost averaging or something. All right, however, short selling through to ETFs is preferable to shorting individual stocks because of the lower risk of short squeeze, a trading scenario in which a security or commodity that has been heavily shorted spikes higher as well as a significantly lower cost of borrowing compared with the cost incurred in trying to short a stock with high short interest. These risk mitigation considerations are important to a beginner. All right, so you can come back and read a little bit more on that. Six, number six, and then we have one more after six, right? Because this is seven best ETF trading strategies for beginners, baby. All right, so check this out. Number six, betting on seasonal trends. I love this. ETFs are also good tools for beginners to capitalize on seasonal trends. Let's consider two well-known seasonal trends. The first one is called sell in May and go away phenomenon. It refers to the fact that U.S. equities have historically underperformed over the sixth month May to October period compared with the November to April period. The other seasonal trend is the tendency of gold to gain in the months of September and October, where I was born. All right, thanks to strong demand from India ahead of the wedding season and the Diwali Festival of Lights, which typically falls mid-October to mid-November, okay? The broad market weakness trend can be exploited by shorting all of this stuff around the end of April for the beginning of May and closing out the short position in late October, right after the market swoons typical of that month have recurred. So last but not least, the best ETF trading strategies for beginners. The last one is hedging. A beginner may occasionally need to hedge or protect against downside risk in a substantial portfolio, perhaps one that has been acquired as the results of an inheritance. All right, yeah, I heard that, man. So somebody passing you down something, man, make sure there's no risk in it. That's like somebody giving you a bed for free that got bed bugs in it, all right? <laughs> or telling you you can borrow their car and it ain't got no gas in it. So <laughs> like you gotta walk to the gas station and go and get a can real quick, all right? All right, so suppose you have an inherited a sizable portfolio of blue chips and are concerned about the risk of a large decline in U.S. equity. One solution is to buy put. However, since most beginners are not familiar with option trading, which is dangerous, uh, an alternate strategy is to initiate a sharp position in broad market ETFs like the S&P 500 ETF or the SPDR Dow Jones Industrial Average, Average ETF. If the market declines as expected, your blue chip equity position will be hedged and effectively since the declines in your portfolio will be offset by gains in the short ETF position. Note that your gains would also be capped if the market advances, since gains in your portfolio will be offset by losses in a short ETF position. Nevertheless, ETFs offer beginners a relatively easy and efficient method of hedging, okay? So the bottom line is exchange-traded funds have many features that make them ideal instruments for beginner, beginning traders and investors. Some ETF trading strategies are especially suitable for beginners like dollar cost averaging. And I'm gonna do another video. So if you're new to this channel, you know how to do it, man. You know what to do and do a Jet Li sidekick. So they recommend these seven for beginning investors. And they start with dollar cost averaging. And then it goes to asset allocation. 
those two will be the ones that I would go ahead and uh, recommend investment advice with. Do a Jet Lee sidekick to the like button. Love you guys. See you in the next